Welcome along guys. Well, the sun is shining. The roads are dry-ish. <laughs> I've still got the Triumph Rocket 3 to play on. This is my final review on this bike. My sum up of everything I've discovered about it, everything I love about it, everything I don't like about it in the week I've spent riding this. Massive thanks to Destination Triumph in Washington for lending me this. It's been incredible, really appreciated. This is their demo, so if you want to ride this exact bike, get your asses down to Washington and have a go on it. You will not be disappointed, but let's get on with it. Right, let's hit it. So if you haven't seen it, I've already done a, a first impressions of this bike. I'll put a link to the video up above, up there somewhere. Just a quick recap. If you found this video, you probably know a bit about this bike, but this is a two and a half litre, 164 brake horsepower, 221 newton meters of torque monster. It is the most torquey production motorcycle ever produced. <laughs> and it, you can't help but laugh when you open it up. It is incredible, the performance of this machine. It is fast. Not only is it torquey, it is fast. This bike weighs 294 kilos. And, you know, it, it sounds a lot if you're comparing it to sports bikes, etc. For, for a massive cruiser, that isn't really too bad. And this bike is actually 40 kilos lighter than the old Rocket 3. So yeah, the riding position is super comfortable. I really like this GT position. Yeah, you are cupped into the seat a little bit, so there's no option to move around. But where you are in the seat, it is very comfortable. Your feet are almost outstretched, even me at 6'2". The thing which has impressed me the most with this, you, you might think riding a two and a half litre bike, it could be a bit vibey, you know, it could be, the clutch could be heavy, it may not be particularly smooth, there may be a lot of engine braking. There is none of those things. This bike is so smooth, I mean, it's a triple, of course it's a triple, it's a Triumph, but despite the pistons being well, that, they must be like that, despite the pistons being the size of Dulux paint tins. It is remarkably smooth and remarkably vibe free. There's a tiniest of tiny vibes through the bars, and I'm talking tiny here. I'm talking less than a BMW GS. You know, it, it, it's just hardly noticeable, certainly not enough to worry you. Again, if through the seat, no noticeable vibes. The clutch is super light and the gearbox is beautiful. The, the whole thing meshes together really well. It's also shaft drive, and sometimes with shaft drive, you can get a bit of a, a notch, you know, it's just like a direct drive, so there's no slack like a chain, and sometimes that can be a little bit notchy. There's none of that. It is beautiful, absolutely beautiful to ride. Now there is an option for a quick shifter on this as well. This bike doesn't have it. <laughs> I would like to have tried the quick shift. It'd be interesting to see what this sort of bike <laughs> would be like with a quick shifter. But this one doesn't have it, but I don't think it's any big loss on this sort of thing. It's not crying out for a quick shifter. This is a cruiser after all, but you can add one. All right, let's give it a little bit around here. It's a bit gritty, this road. It's not ideal. But that power! That power and grunt you have, oh, it's, it's really, it's a lovely way of riding, just having ultimate power. People have asked, will it wheelie? <laughs> I think you probably would. If you turn off the, the electronic assistance, this thing would wheelie no problem. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to try and wheelie this. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it would. It's one of those bikes where if I owned it, I just don't think I could stop opening it up everywhere. It's so intoxicating. That torque, it really is intoxicating. I get it. I get what cruisers are about. They're about going in straight lines, having loads of power and forget about the corners. <laughs> Not this one, sir. This one 
I could wow you some sports bikes on this, I'm sure I could. It's a monster. The brakes are amazing, the Stylima calipers. An amazing amount of stopping power when you really need to stop. Again, a big cruiser, you would imagine, yeah. I bet the brakes aren't very good. You have to anticipate 100 yards up, a front if, up front if you need to stop. Not on this. This is a performance machine in every respect. Make no mistake. You could do a track day on this. <laughs> I think you actually could. The downside to all that handling performance is the suspension is a little bit harsh. A tiny bit. I and mean, you can see it's, a, it's jumping me around a little bit. It's not just going to ride over the bumps and you're not going to notice them. You can feel what the road is doing. You can't quite feel the, the absolute texture of the tarmac like you can on a sports bike. I can feel it enough to know what's going on, but the suspension is firm to, 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 to give you that feedback. <laughs> it's a bit of mud in the road there. You can hustle this! You can absolutely hustle this! <laughs> oh wow! It's amazing! I think what will happen is you could probably get a bit carried away on this and you could throw it around and at some point you'd be laying it in and it'll go and the foot pegs would touch down. <laughs> and you would realise you'd reached a limit. <laughs> but for normal riding, wow. You can hang off the seat a little bit as well, which is quite nice. You can sort of shift your upper body over to give you a little bit more weight in the corners to, to get it round. But it's beautiful, it's so well balanced. It is so well balanced. So that's enough throwing it around, <laughs> getting myself in trouble. It handles beautifully. That is the end result of it. Beautifully handling machine. So as I mentioned, this bike is fully keyless, but here's the key. Very, quite a big key, a nice key, look, a really good quality key, but you do need the key to fuel the bike to unlock the petrol cap. Like so, which, after my problems with the KTM Duke, whereby that was fully keyless and the cap was keyless and it wouldn't open automatically, I actually really like the fact that this bike requires a key to fuel it. Yeah, it's a bit of a pain having to get the key out of your pocket. Rather that than be stuck at the petrol station when your automatic release won't work. I wonder if you have to actually... No, once it's unlocked, you can leave it unlocked. So if you're not worried about people coming and stealing your petrol, then just leave it unlocked. That's even better. I'll just leave the fuel cap unlocked and not have to worry. <laughs> These bar end mirrors on the Triumphs, absolutely fantastic. I can't see any of my shoulders in those mirrors whatsoever. They're stable, they don't vibrate, and I've got a brilliant view behind me. So the mirrors are fantastic. Oh, it's such a nice bike to ride slowly as well. It, it's lovely to ride quickly, but just to cruise on it, as I said, it's so smooth, it's so tractable. You can just poodle on this, and this is in sport mode. Let's actually change it to Let's change it to road. Press the button down, close the throttle. There we go, road mode. Now, I just want to see if the throttle response is any better in road, because it's a, it's a tiny bit snatchy in sport. I mean, I'm talking tiny bit snatchy. Yeah, in the road mode, I can tell it's a, a little bit less aggressive when you go on the throttle. It's a tiny little bit lumpy if you close the throttle quite quickly. I mean, that's just due to Euro 5 stuff, and it doesn't seem to have made much difference by putting it into road mode to clear that either. But it's, you know, it's perfectly acceptable. It's nothing to worry about. I'm just being a bit hypercritical. So I'm going to go back into sport mode now. Sport, press the button, close the throttle, bang. So you can change the modes on the fly. you just got to close the throttle. Yeah, and that picks up much sharper in sport mode, as you would expect. overtaking grunt is just so impressive just the way it turns in is also so impressive and the power you've got when you open it is incredible it's so addictive 
the performance on this bike is absolutely addictive. I mean, could you imagine having a bike as fast as this and then it didn't handle? How much trouble would that get you in? Zooming off at incredible speed and then not being able to go around the corner or stop. Now this, this bike handles and stops as well as it goes. And that's a feat in itself. So what update on the miles per gallon? We're currently saying we're doing 38 miles per gallon average with how I've been riding. Not too bad, if that is to be believed. And we've still got a 100 mile range. So fuel consumption looks like it could actually be reasonable. Oh, bloody lights. Come on, come on. Don't, don't do that. Come on, lights. We've got a rocket on the leash here. It'd be so good to launching at the lights. Because of that extra weight it's got. I think you could really worry sports bikes on this. Ah, oh, I forgot about this. Okay, let's test out the cruise control while we've got a seat at 50 miles an hour. So push it down. Push it down again to set. There we go, and that's it. Down, down twice to set. That's set at 53. Then if you want to increase, you can push that up to increase. Push that down to decrease. If you want to turn it off, I guess it's the usual. You can either push the throttle forward or touch any of the brakes. Yeah, there we go. Indeed it is. Other little extras on here. You've got a USB charger on the headlight then. It's the small type, not your standard car charger, but I guess you need a little adapter to use the standard USB, USB standard uh, cigarette lighter type adapters. Uh, other creature comforts, uh, that's about it really. So on the motorway, 70 miles an hour, it is doing two and a half thousand revs. Just over two and a half thousand revs. Absolutely cruising. Wind protection, it's not bad. I think that gives you something. My chest, there's no air here. I'm getting air here. But around my chest area, there's it, it, no wind blast. And my helmet is in the wind, but you've only got a little, little fly screen. 80 miles an hour, exactly 3,000 revs. So absolutely beautiful for cruising on the motorway. And actual miles per gallon at 80 miles an hour, out of interest, according to the computer, we're doing 49.1 miles per gallon, sat at 78. That 3,000 revs, 41 miles per gallon actual. Not too bad. One of the slight dislikes with this bike, did I mention it already? But the suspension, the bike handles lovely and it handles well, but the suspension, you can reach the limits of it quite easily. Even if you get a big bump, I've actually, I've actually bottomed out the forks at one point over a big bump in the road. I mean, it's, it's a little bit harsh. It's a little bit harsh. I think this bike would be a perfect bike to put some sort of electronic suspension on it, where as you change to sport mode, it would stiffen up the suspension, but you had an option then to have it in road mode and it would be a little bit softer because it is a little bit harsh, it would be a slight criticism if you do want to cruise. And this is the GT version, so really, you could, you could tell her that was a little bit harsh. It could be a little bit softer, could manage the, the bump management could be a little bit better on it would be my only criticism but it's lovely when you do want to hustle it but you may not it may get on your nerves a little bit if you just want to cruise again that's being quite critical but i want to come up with some things which i do this bike is so good i could just sit here and tell you how good it was because the, the, the negatives i'm mentioning really are minor it's not something which would stop me purchasing this bike but i just want to make you aware of them wouldn't be much point watching reviews if you didn't get the full picture, would it? Another slight criticism is the bike sounds lovely, but it's a little bit quiet. I have got my external audio recorder running on this, just to give you a better idea of how this sounds, because you wouldn't hear much at all if I was just relying on the helmet mic. So I am running the external recorder in my backpack, but I always set the levels of those so the bike sounds as it does for me when I'm riding. So, that, so how you're hearing this is how it sounds for me as a rider. 
it could perhaps be a little bit louder I'd love to put an aftermarket system on this or even if I don't know if try and actually make an arrow or an official product yet to go on this but it just needs to be another 20 30 percent louder and it'll be perfect so the rocket 3 how much is this going to cost you to actually insure well I spoke to my friends at Bimoto and they did a quote for Nigel <laughs> as per usual so Nigel is my test subject for my insurance quotes he's a 37 year old teacher from Norwich one conviction for speeding um, I'll put his details up on the screen so for Nigel to insure himself fully comprehensive on a new rocket it would cost him £363 for BE Moto's titanium cover so it's the most expensive quote I've had but this is one of the most expensive bikes I've ever quoted on this is a 20k motorcycle right there's stuff at the pub and I'll just show you how to maneuver the bike before you've had a few it's a big imposing looking bike to have to try and maneuver I'll do it without a glove on to see got a bit better grip but the thing i like about the gt is you have this so you can put one hand on this and then use the bars to maneuver and that is actually makes it a lot much much easier having that to hold on to if you stand on the right hand side of the bike with the side stand down if for any reason it does get away from you you've got the stand to protect you and i think it's easier to, to keep a bike upright when it's to, so it's easier to push it than it is to pull it towards you if it starts to go. So I always like to maneuver my big bikes from the right hand side with the side stand down. And like I say, with this on the GT, you can slap it on full lock. You can see it's, you know, the turning circle isn't fantastic. I do feel like TMF now doing this, but I think for a bike like this, it's important to show you the sort of turning circle and what it's like to maneuver on the ground. And it is big, but if, if done properly if done carefully it's no problem at all i'm not going to do a full walk around on this bike in this video i did that in my first ride video again linked at the top so if you want to walk around of it and all the lovely little gorgeous detailing look at that video for this one it's going to be more about riding it on the bike so the things i love about this bike is first of all the engine i mean this bike is really all about that engine what a powerful incredible lump this thing has got in it and the fact that triumph have made it so usable so tractable really is a, a testament to their engineering department you'd imagine that thing to be to be very lumpy you know the throttle response to be, to be terrible a lot of engine braking there's none of those things absolutely amazing so my favorite thing about this bike is the lump other things i like about it is the handling a massive cruiser which handles like this is incredible absolutely amazing that this handles as well as it does and again that's another testament to triumph's engineering department that they've managed to pull that off whether that's because that front wheel is a bit closer because you know to, to bring the front in to make it turn in easier it's a, it's a testament to their department so handling power that is my favorite things about this well there we go guys that is it the end of my time with the rocket i have been super impressed with this bike there's not many bikes i say this very few times but there's not many bikes when i ride them i can actually see myself owning this bike and to think this bike is a cruiser it's not really my thing and even still i could see myself owning one of these it's an incredible bike Triumph have done an amazing job with this getting this two and a half litre 221 newton metre engine in a bike and making it usable and making it smooth making it tractable I, I don't know how they've done it it is an incredible feat of engineering massive massive thanks to Destination Triumph at Washington for lending me this this is their demo bike if you want to ride this exact bike get your asses down to them uh, Washington it's near it's near Worthing ish area on the south coast but massive thanks to Destination Triumph I've really loved my week on this bike it's such a shame the weather's only just started to dry out a bit and I haven't been able to go out and spend more time with this but what I'm planning to do is in the spring is hopefully get on the R version and perhaps do a comparison back to back between the GT 
and the R. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time I'm out. And who knows what it will be. <laughs> see you later, guys. This is power level one, which is full power. This thing is absolutely bonkers. It's also pretty quick. Yeah, all right. Never mind getting beat up. Give me this any day of the week. Oh, <laughs> oh, Hello, Destination Triumph. That's the Solon branch. You don't want to go to that one. You want to go to the Washington. You want to go to the Washington branch. <laughs>